Today I am going to be walking you through how to recreate this image from the TV show Mr. Robot. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. It's about to get raw. It's about to get real. It's from Raw to Real with Ryan. All right. So today, before we get started, I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Paul C. Buff. Paul C. Buff Inc. provides professional studio strobes, modifiers, and more. They're right here in Nashville, Tennessee, been established since 1980. They are awesome. I love them to death. So if you are looking for great, professional, and affordable, and reliable photography gear, guys, make sure that you check out Paul C. Buff. On with the show. All right, here we are. We've got our studio set up. I'm gonna be sitting on this little box right here. And I've got the Link 800 watt second flash unit, new from Paul C. Buff. It's gonna be awesome. We're not gonna be using the high speed sync feature today. I've just got my Cyber Commander and my little Cyber Sync transmitter connected to it. So I've got all my channels set up. Should be good. Here we go. Awesome. So let's get started. All right, let's take it into Photoshop, see what we got. All right, we are in Adobe Bridge and I've got my images pulled up here and I think this one is my favorite. I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up in Photoshop, which I already did. Went ahead and brought it in a little bit closer. Went ahead and did the retouching, so we're gonna go ahead and make quick work of this double exposure. First thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna hit my W hotkey and go up here to select subject. Photoshop has made some advancements and does a pretty good job of selecting your subject when it's, you know, clearly contrasting with the background and uh, you've got good lighting. Now it's not perfect. If you zoom in, you can see that I missed a couple of areas over here. That's okay since you've already got W, that W hotkey selected, which has your uh, magic wand brush selected. We're going to go ahead and just fill that in right here. And just like that. Gosh, I feel like I sound like that painter guy. What's his name? Bob Rossi? <laughs> Bob Rossi. <laughs> Bob Rossi, yeah. <laughs> We're just going to add a little bit of a, a little bit here, a little bit there. All right. Cool. So we got a selection. I'm sure it's not perfect. That's okay. We're going to, I'm going to hit control zero just to zoom it back out 100% and, uh, or to fit the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and hit my mask tool down here. Oops, let me go back. There we go. All right. So you see it's kind of rigid here. Uh, one quick way we can fix that. Just go over to select at the top, select the mask. And we can move this smooth slider to kind of smooth out some of those transitions just a little bit. You go, know, maybe at, uh, I guess 20% there, something like that. Um, <clears throat> I think that's probably going to be good. Hit OK. All right. And if we want to extract some of these hairs here on my head and on my face here from my beard, uh, we can go back up to select and hit select a mask, or I could have just done it the first time. That way I wouldn't have to go back into it. And right here, we're going to choose our refine edge brush tool, or you can hit the R hotkey. I'm just going to go right along my face here and just paint. And it's going to automatically grab some of those individual hairs. Same thing right here on the edge of my head. Voila. There we go. And I'm going to hit OK. Now that we have our extraction, I'm going to delete these other two bottom layers. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on my face here. You can see I cut some of my face off a little bit. I'm going to select the mask. Hit B for brush, and with my white color selected, I'm going to unclick this, turn this back to 100%. Right click, make sure my brush size is a little bit smaller, and we'll just keep the hardness at 0%. I'm going to zoom in and just kind of paint my cheek back in right there. 
Here we go. If I were smart, I probably would have shot this on a white background to make my life really easy, but I didn't, so doing what we got to do. I might do it right here as well, just to kind of paint my ear back. Awesome. Now that we've got all of that, uh, I'm going to create a new layer. So Control Shift N, hotkey for creating a new layer. Uh, I'm just going to name it BG for background. And I'm going to hit my G hotkey to bring up the paint bucket. Make sure that paint bucket is white. I'm going to fill it with white. Drag that layer below my face layer. I'm just going to put my name there so we know that's who I am. And all right. So we've got, we've gone from a gray background to a white background. What we're going to do next is we're going to make it black and white. So I can just go right up here to this black and white layer on adjustments, click on that, boom, black and white image. Now I might play with some of these presets here just to uh, mess with the contrast of the image, but I may not. What I may do, actually, scratch that. I am just going to go to my levels, create a new levels adjustment, and play with some of the whites, some of the mid-tones, blacks, to make it a little bit more contrasty. There we go. That's a word, contrasty. I think that's good. Back out there. And let's see what else we need to do. Now, one thing I did do is I uh, went to um, Envato Elements. I've got uh, a membership with Envato and uh, downloaded this. Um, what is this? How do you even say this word? Gou goulage, goulash pattern. It's like the pattern of money <laughs> that they print on money. Um, I don't even know how you say it. Yeah, Gou we'll just go with goulash, goulache, goulouchi, goulachi. G U I L L O C H E. How do you say that, Kelsey? Goulash? We're going to go with that. Maybe I'm uneducated and maybe I haven't heard that word. I'm... Okay, well, this is not a meal, so it's definitely not goulash like that. Yeah, but anyway, it's like the tiny little print. Anyway, th this is the pattern. Um, and with that pattern, what we're going to do is, um, because I've got it downloaded, I got, if you want to get this pattern, you can do it from, uh, uh, envatoelements.com uh, or, uh, you can download it online <laughs> or make it yourself. Um, I'm just letting you know what I got. Uh, so on this background layer, I'm going to double click it and I'm going to go to pattern overlay. And actually I've already got it selected, but let me, to show you what I did in case I didn't have it selected. Inside this patterns uh, toolbar here, you've got all these different patterns that you could select. There's a bunch of squares and other weird things. And also I've got this goulash, whatever pattern, that looks like it's printed on a check or a dollar bill or something. And uh, I'm just going to keep it like that and hit OK. There you go. Got that. Dunzo. All right. And now that we've got this, there's, um, uh, I could do a lot of different things next, but the thing I'm choosing to do next is I'm going to go ahead and make out our uh, type. And so I'm going to hide these layers real quick and just do this real quick, just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, Photoshop does a lot of, uh, does a good job at just throwing in random, looks like Latin words to fill in the space, just to kind of show you what you're doing. So there's our font right there. <laughs> uh, so we're going to put in like, you know, we're going to make up stuff. We're going to, first of all, make sure our font isn't white, but black, so we can actually see it. And I'm going to type in stuff like it's an account number and just type in random stuff and probably just copy that and paste it over and over and over again. Yep. Just keep on doing that. If you want to put some gibberish in there, put some gibberish in there. That can't be right. <laughs> no, but this is supposed to, uh, again, I really 
probably should watch more TV. I'm sure this has to do with the uh, what the show is actually about. So um, I may put in some other random stuff. Huh. This is Photoshop. And copy and paste that in random places. Double exposure. Mr. Robot. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. R really, anything will do. Good enough. Alright, cool. So we've got our stuff, right? We've got our text, our font, and everything. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control T. And I'm going to move, uh, and actually as I hit Control T, I'm going to hold the Shift key down as I rotate this so it keeps it right where it is. Um, and I may duplicate this here in a second just to make it um, like smaller and closer together. Actually, you know what, let me just go ahead and do that. Uh, double clicked it to select everything. Uh, you can always hit Control A to select all. Um, but I'm going to go up to this little A up here. And I'm going to play with the spacing of this. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Right here. There we go. Make that really close together. And then Control C, copy that. Probably paste it again. And then what I might do is Control A to select it all again and mess with the size of the font. Um, and actually, I would do that up here. Uh, might go down to like eight, maybe even six. Make it really small. And then bring it in even closer. Make it even smaller. And if you ever get like really lost in all that, you can always go up to these little lines up here and click reset character to reset your uh, settings. So, but now that I've done that, I'm just going to go down here, hit paste again. So now we have a bunch of font, okay? And I'm actually, and it's centered in the center, so I'm going to go ahead and sit, hit this right here to center it on the left side, which, at, since I've rotated it, it's actually the top side. But uh, that way it's all lined up together. I'm going to click out of that, and then I'm just going to drag it up like this. There we go. So that's there <laughs> for when we come back to it. All right, we've got our cityscape up now. Uh, I think this silhouette is probably going to work really, really well. Uh, because half the work's already kind of done for us. Uh, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to click this black and white adjustment layer, make it black and white, click on the levels adjustment layer, and play around with some of the blacks and the whites here, maybe some of these mid-tones. I think I'll probably keep it like that for right now. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit Control, Shift, Alt, E to stamp everything. And let's see, probably what I'll do is with a white brush, I will just paint some of this stuff out, the sky. There we go. And for some of the other little tones that are in here that you can barely see, uh, I might grab my burn, uh, actually my dodge tool and just kind of paint some of those things out. There we go. And if I really wanted to, I could use the burn brush and do the same thing for the lower half of the city, or just use a black brush and paint some of this bottom half of the city black like that. Probably leave it like that for right now. If I need to mess with it, I can uh, a little bit later. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that layer that la. Going to go ahead and rename that layer city and drag this layer into our Photoshop document. There we go. And I'm just going to lower the opacity so I can kind of see what's going on behind my head here. Uh, I may raise it just a little bit. Well, I don't know. Depending on if I want to show off my cool buff hat or not. <laughs> if 
for the sake of the video, we'll probably just cut it right there, unfortunately. Just kind of messy idea we had. And I'm bring that opacity back up and change it to screen mode. That way, uh, you know, you still kind of see the city in the background and everything like that. But we can choose to leave it here, but I'm going to actually get rid of it on the sides. And so probably the easiest way to do that is to hold the control key down and select our layer on my face and hit control shift I to invert that. And that way with a black brush on this layer here for the city, I can hit this mask and it will take we actually did the opposite. Let me actually just hit control I to inverse that. There we go. And so that way it just kind of got rid of everything on the outside there. Okay. So what you see right now is all this blank space here in my head. And, uh, we want to get rid of that part. So what I want to do first, uh, is I want to take my font that we made. Um, uh, I'm going to drag it up on top. And then I'm actually just going to resize it. Hit control T. And I want to hold down Alt and Shift to lock in uh, its place. And just kind of, or actually, let me do that again. I'm going to hold down just Alt. Yeah. And it kind of resize it right about where my head and the city meet here. I may have to take it in on one side. That about there is good. And I'm thinking, unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to get rid of this side of the hat. So um, I want to go ahead and click on my layer with a brush. I'm going to paint out whoop, with a black brush, paint out this part. And I'll have to do the same thing on the other layer as well. If you hold down the shift key, you can actually lock it in place and it'll just go in a straight line. So let me try that. I'll do the same thing on the city layer. I'm swapping between my face and that layer. And I'm also going to add this background pattern overlay uh, over my face just a little bit to make it look like it's uh like the pattern on money <laughs> and so i'm going to bring this over on top now it won't let me change the blending mode right now unless i rasterize that layer so i'm going to right click hit rasterize layer style and now i'm going to play with some of the blending modes i think i'm going to change it i think i'm going to do just darken for right now so we've got that still got this white dome over my head so we're gonna we're gonna fix that uh, I'm going to go back over to my city, city layer, um, and let's see, whoops, could probably just go ahead and grab the magic wand tool and select everything and then select my, so what I did was I selected the picture itself, got the magic wand tool to mask out the city and then, uh, with the layer mask selected, I could actually just paint this part out. I could do that, or I could, um, you know, maybe play with the levels or something like that. But this seems like it'll just be quick and easy. So we'll just do that real fast. Hit deselect. I'm going to, whoops, paint out this stuff on the side here. There we go. Awesome. So I've got my little silhouette thing I've got going here. I may, like I said before, paint some of this city out. Just kind of like this right here. Just a tiny bit. Might play with some of the flow. Decrease it some so I can just kind of lightly paint over it. And then we're going to add that font back in. And just keep it right there at the top part of my head. So literally, I can just select that layer, hit my mask tool, and paint with a black brush this bottom part out. Make sure my flow is back at 100%. So that 
actually shows up. Very cool. And if you go over to defont.com, you can just download, actually, nope, just kidding. And if you quickly Google Mr. Robot font, it takes you to fontmeme.com, boom, there it is. Download that bad boy, and we can create a new text layer. I'm hitting the hotkey T for text. I can just, whoops. And just select anywhere and let's make our font a lot bigger and like I said before with everything selected you can just go back here uh, let's see windows character there it is go back to these lines here reset characters to make sure everything's back to normal and I'm gonna make my font right there at 72 to see if that works I'm gonna select my Mr. Robot font, which is somewhere. There it is. And I'm probably going to decrease the size of that font, maybe 48, maybe a little bit lower, maybe 30. And to Mr. Robot, we'll just type in Mr. Ryan. <laughs> and Looks like that font is white, so I'm gonna hit Control All to select everything. Make it white, hit OK. Select that one little period, make it red. Just like that. Slide it over. I like this. This is gonna be my new profile picture. There we go. Hit OK. And to make this font pop a little bit more, I think I'm going to create a gradient to go behind it. So I'll probably just go, uh, actually, I'll hit Shift-G to select, oh, actually, nope, there we go, my gradient tool right here. And I want to go on a new layer, Control-Shift-N, we'll just call it Gradient, hit OK, and with that gradient tool selected, I'm going to go in the top middle here, holding my shift key, and dragging down about halfway or so to make that little gradient. Change the blending mode to multiply, and then we're going to de decrease the opacity to 50% or so. There we go. I may give it a little bit more of a faded tone to it. I think now what I'm going to do is pull up a color lookup layer in the adjustments panel and I'm going to play around with some of these settings to kind of give it a little bit more of a punch, maybe a film type look to it. I may even mix some of them together. I'm going to go with this soft warming. I want to decrease it to 50%. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to go down to this where was it? This Fuji one. No, Kodak. There we go. This Kodak looking one. Keep it where it's at. And then I'm going to go back, create a new one, go down to film stock, and maybe decrease it to like 20%, maybe 30. There we go. And then maybe just add a slight fade to it with this little curves layer right here. Bring it down a touch about there and I may even take all of these group them together and we'll just call it color grading and then we might slide it below the Mr. Ryan font so it still pops and has its red color there and there you have it guys we have successfully recreated the Mr. Robot double exposure effect
Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to hit the notification button so you can stay up to date on all of my latest videos. Be sure to leave a comment on what you'd like to see me work on next. Hope to see you guys next time, and again, thanks for watching. There's a train coming through. You can probably hear that train coming through right now. I'm gonna wait for that to pass. It's a long train. It's like 50 yards away. It's like dangerously close to this building. Hey, what's up? Uh, <laughs> hey, what's up guys? This is uh, still going. Still going. What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. This is ah, blah, blah. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. Uh, it's about to get uh, Oh, is it done? Nope, still done. <laughs>